Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Eric Jackson, E R I C J A C K S O N, City of South Fort and Fire Rescue. Yeah, I know what I was about to say. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Captain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got some of the details earlier mm -hmm. you told us, but just, what's the update or what can you tell us now? So right now, firefighters um, have enlisted the help of the City of South Fulton Police Department and the State of Georgia uh, Fire Marshal's Office. Uh, we did so to have more resources and to have more individuals involved with helping us to determine just how this fire started. Uh, the assistance of the State Fire Marshal is great because in the event that we should need further assistance, they do have a canine that we could call upon if needed. Right now that isn't needed, so we're working just within our investigators with City of South Fulton Fire, City of South Fulton Police Department, and the State Fire Marshal's Office for cause and origin of this fire. What, what can you tell, can us, about you tell us about the people who are on account of the Well, so Doug, I actually can't tell you anything because we are still trying to just confirm that information. Yes, we have been given some information relative to that, but we're keeping that close to the vest just because we want to make sure that all parties have been notified and we have an accurate account. So we aren't going back and trying to retract or take away from statements that were made that maybe were incorrect. So we just we just want to make sure that we get it right. But you have the number of people that were there, how many people were transported, all that? We have a number of people that uh, were transported. There were five that were transported to Great Moore Hospital. They are in stable condition, so that's a, that's a good thing. Um, and then there were some individuals that did make it out of the house. So we're dealing with the number of people that were transported to the house within the number of people that were unaccounted for. Uh, that total number, again, uh, I have not received the final number on just what that number is, but we are looking at a number quite possibly over 10. Lieutenant, do you know if um are you able to say whether this, this was a multi-generation family living in the same house? Um, that's some, they were related? That's some of the information we're trying to decipher through now. Are we dealing with one family, two families, family and friends? That's what we want to get through. That's why the notification piece is so important, and that's why we want to make sure that we have all of those components together before we actually get that information out. Because once it's out, it's out, and it's really hard to take that back. So you're so. saying the number is like... Is probably over 10, including it's the five victims, the people that made it out, and those unaccounted for when you add them all up? That's correct. Okay, what's what's the number that's unaccounted for right now? Uh, quite possibly, we're looking at, uh, well, we're still getting through that right now. So we had that number, just not prepared to release that right now because that number could go, because I've heard two different numbers. So okay. instead of sticking to one number, we're just keeping it at several right now. But that, that is a fair account. But as far as those transported, because I had been in contact with Grady, there were five that were transported to the hospital. Do you know their conditions? or? It was stable. They were stable, stable, stable condition, yes. So what is the family telling you guys about heating last night? Are they using space heaters? What, what, are, what are they saying? So we know that some members of the family have shared that information. However, um, I don't want to divulge that right now because we still are in an active investigation, certainly because of the magnitude of what's quite possibly taking place and just the fact that there are five individuals uh, that have gone to the hospital is enough. But the fact that there are individuals that are unaccounted for um, is something totally different. So with the information that we have received, and yes, we have received information and I'm not telling you all that we have not received anything at all. I'm just saying that I'm just not in a position to release it because we're still very early in the investigation. And things could change as it is right now. Even just the number of those accounted for or unaccounted for, excuse me, has changed uh, once already since I've been here. So before I put anything out, I'd rather just keep it close and until we get an actual confirmation, then I can release that. What can you tell us about the structure? How is it and what is that doing as far as crews being able to get in and continue their investigation? It's really hampering our efforts because the, the house was totally destroyed by fire. And again, when we arrived this morning, um, at little after, little, just before 5 a.m., the house was fully engulfed in flames from practically every window and every door of this house. And so as that was taking place, it did nothing. It just continued to weaken the structure. So now after the fire has been extinguished, we have burned out members of this home, you know, two by fours, flooring, you name it, it's been compromised. And 
looking at it from the back side, that is all sunken in. It's all falling in. So it's really hampering our efforts for our firefighters to really get in there and start to determine exactly where it's cause and origin, where it might possibly have this fire occurred. And even including the accountability of those individuals, which is why I'm still saying we're still trying to uh, account for those those individuals because we can't even enter the house. You can't confirm it's a fatal fire. You can't say it's a fatality? Not, not from our perspective, not at this point. And I know uh, you may have already touched on this, but talk about the help you're getting from other agencies. I understand you have a drone. Correct. So with the assistance of South Fulton PD, we're able to use some uh, technological, technological uh, advances in terms of uh, drone utilization. We were able to call upon the state uh, who were able to assist us, again, in determining cause and origin. So just being able to help fulfill all that we need to have done in terms of investigating this fire. So each one brings a different element. So we want to be able to use all those elements to determine just how this fire may have started. So, and that's all the assistance that we've gotten right now. Uh, it's just from the State Fire Marshal's Office, State of Georgia State Fire Marshal's Office, and the South Fort Police Department. Um, uh, let me make reference to this. And this in no way, means, or form is directly associated with this fire, but just in general. It's getting colder now. And so we know that uh, people tend to bring out space heaters and uh, smoke alarms aren't always utilized in the fashion that they should be. And there are times when a fire extinguisher is not available. All those things, including a fire escape plan, all those things are should be certainly taken into consideration for anybody, anybody watching, anybody listening. Certainly in the with the, in light of the fact that we're still in fire prevention mode, so we're putting this messaging out there continuously. Having working smoke alarms, having a fire extinguisher at home, having a way to get out in the event that there's a fire, are uh, all things. Space heater utilization. Space heaters need space, so there should at least be a three-foot perimeter around a space heater. So those types of things we're always putting out. Um, even if this hadn't happened, we'd still be putting this messaging out. We have been putting this messaging out just to remind folks what to do. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.